Alright, so welcome to round one. Looks like we've won the die roll, so let's play first. And this looks like a keep. Uh, we're going to be able to play Castigator on turn two, followed with some either Vigilance or First Strike. Hopefully we draw an untapped land, so that we can get the Courier Griffin down on turn four, but... Uh, I guess the consideration is do I play a tap land first so that I can Castigator on 2 and definitely hit Griffin on 4. That is 3 draws away if we don't draw a land and all of our lands are on tap now. If we don't draw a land in the first 3 turns I'd be fairly surprised. And if we don't draw a land in the first 3 turns we've drawn 3 spells so I'm probably going to have something to do. Alright, so let's just get the planes in. I like getting maximum value out of these lands, so... And we've got our fourth land. So we can either go first strike or Vigi next turn. It'll depend on what our opponent plays. If they have a two powered creature, uh, they have a one four. So we'll drop a looming spires. Okay, go first strike here. And just send in for four. So, while hoping to draw a land, I wasn't hoping to draw all of them. We've managed to draw two lands so far. Alright, Stonewalker, wake up. And our opponent's not coming in. That's going to be a nice one a bit later on. At this stage I'd like to get my Griffin down. Pick us up a couple of life, and give us a nice easy attack on the next turn. So, slightly annoyingly, our opponent Stone Waker is going to be able to just send in some difficult to deal with creatures for a little while. Looks like we're losing our Griffin. Our opponent playing mono red so far. Still not interested in attacking. Angelic Captain, okay, so they're going to be a little bit annoyed they threw their Touch of the Void at a Griffin at the moment. So the line I'm going for here is just going to be an Angelic Captain. Follow that up with Fire Mantle Mage, and uh, it's going to make our opponent's life very difficult indeed. We're going to be able to give our guys Menace, going to give uh, the Core Cascader plus two so I can get through what our opponent is doing at the moment. This is all assuming he doesn't have another removal spell for the captain. But all being equal, we're going to be swinging in for about 10 damage next turn. And our opponent, not a lot to do, just dropping the elemental and swinging in for 3. No chance of blocking that one, because we're going to have a lot of damage on the next turn. Alright. So we will start off with our Fire Mental Mage. 
and it's almost worth considering keeping up Encircling Fisher here. But attacking in this way means that he really has no good blocks. And I don't mind too much if he wants to trade off for the core castigator once we get that sentinel out of the way. So we'll just get the sentinel out of the way. It's a nice big wall that's causing us a bit of problems. And in the next turn we can encircling Fisher to sort of catch the Akum Stone Walker out, Stone Waker out. Opponent clearly not got a lot going on in hand. He's found some black mana. So here we're looking for some kind of ally. Any real creature will do the job. Oh, that's that's unfortunate. That's really, really not nice. Kind of picking up some nice cards here. Get our Griffin back in the graveyard and killing off our Angelic Captain. So depending on our draw, we might have to switch gears here a bit, try and clean up our opponent's board and really... Just drawing all the bricks here with so many lands. Valakid Invoker is turning out to be quite a good draw at the moment. Depending on how he attacks in this round, I'm thinking Encircling Fissure. Hopefully he's just willing to go in on Wasteland Strangler and Akum Stone Waker. I imagine he has a handful of lands is what's going on here and he's just going to keep sending in these elementals. So at this point we have the choice, we can trade off on the Wasteland Strangler and prevent uh, two of the damage here. But we then don't really have anything to do. So we're taking 6 down to 10. It's probably worth just seeing where we draw, because at the moment we don't have a lot, and Encircling Fissure is kind of my only big out to what my opponent is doing. With the Vestige of Emrakul coming down as well, we're going to have a lot of trouble. Just keep hitting the lands. Completely flooded for an aggro deck. So we're down to the point of saying, well, we just have to defend. We're going to have to get rid of my opponent's uh, creatures here. I can't afford to take the damage again. Hoping he goes in for the kill here. He is not. Alright, a couple of options. We can either double block or take out the Strangler. So we're seeing for 9, we go to 1. Which means any kind of burn spell just kills us. So we're going to cast with Awaken, targeting our opponent. We will Awaken a Plains. And we'll 2, 3, 4, 5. Just need to kind of defend my life total here and hope to draw a useful card. So we're just in the worst position at the moment. Even just something like a Shear Drop to kill off the Wasteland Strangler and pump.
pump our planes. Ah, oh, jeez. Clastria Night Watch is not the kind of card we need to see from our opponent. It's just drawn perfectly, to be honest, while we draw more and more junk. Alright. So we're going to cast with Awake in here. We're going to get rid of this Strangler. And we're going to buff this up so it can block. There's a little bit of landfall in deck, so I'm going to keep that up. And we just have to hope our opponent doesn't draw removal. We're just sitting here trying to draw spells. Having drawn, what is it now, nine lands. We're halfway through them. There's nine left. Yeah, so we've managed to roadblock our opponent a little bit. Ten lands. Eight to go. And we're just going to sit back and wait. We've got nothing to do. Just have to hope our opponent does not draw a useful spell before we do. So they haven't just drawn a land, because if they had, they would just play it and pass. They must have picked up something. Okay. This is very problematic. Uh, the death touch is going to mean we're going to have a lot of trouble defending. So now lands are good draws for our opponent with the retreat. He's going for the Drain. I'm very surprised he went for the Drain. Having Death Touch means I wouldn't be blocking anyway. Sure, he gets to jump his guy, but I'd be pretty happy on his side to trade off. Well, he's got no cards in hand, so the block on the Elemental is easy. So much to go right at the moment. Uh, no, unfortunately, we only have the one shear drop. Uh, Shadow Glider can block, that's nice. It's a spell. I don't believe I can afford to attack, so we're just gonna keep going. Back. I'm looking for Rolling Thunder, looking for. Stone Fury, and looking for my Blade Master, probably. Blade Master makes it very difficult for him to block, and I could just about kill him outright. Pilgrim's Eye is about the best card he could draw here, uh, just giving him another life drain point and another attack. Ondu Rising would probably be quite a nice pickup. Allow us to get in. There's, uh... This game is going against us in rapid fashion. and we have to jump over here. So, Ondu Rising allows us to attack. We can gain a lot of life. That big life swing is pretty nice. He's not going to be blocking 
with his Stone Waker on my Fire Mantle Mage. So I think just get the life, give myself another creature to block with, and run in with the full 11 is the way to go. So we're going to wake up another planes. Now, he doesn't have to block, it's only for 11, but it is a lot of damage. He is going to trade off. That I am surprised about, because that changes his land draws into much less useful. He had to preserve the life. That's very surprising. I expected him to keep the Stone Waker. Maybe chump off one, but I can see wanting to get rid of the menace, but it's not that big a deal, I would thought. So he's got a big decision to make now. Um, Dominator Drone does not help a lot for him, and I'm in the driver's seat. So I think it's pretty easy I can now go on the offensive. If he wants to double block, he uh, loses out pretty badly. And he is going to go for the double block. Um, we're going to get to the two for ones. So we now deal four to Dominator. And that is going to be a pretty devastating loss on his side. That's no cards in here. There we go. Alright, so. We have a red-black, fairly aggressive deck. We saw one good, okay, one good target for Boiling Earth. So I'm sure, uh, sure Anthony wants to see Boiling Earth come in. Have a bit of a look through and see what to take out. Got really flooded that game, so hopefully that doesn't happen again. Yeah, you, um, you kind of start to get good draws when you draw 10 lands for the first half of the game. I think I'm going to leave it as it is and, uh, and run it back. So very nice sequence of draws uh, got us through come back in for the second round now and this looks like a pretty safe key we're once again left with the option of tap land or not because I've got another two drop to play on turn three I'm actually gonna keep the tap land in hand if you like what you hear and next time so we can just keep curving along. I like getting, as I said, maximum value on the sandstone bridge here. And we keep drawing the lands up anyway, so... We'll grab our slide runner. Get to get in for three, four damage next. Valakid Invoker is a nice one, but it's not going to be enough to stop the Strider. Not anytime soon. Given we just keep drawing the lands, I think I'm just going to go right ahead and get the Predator down next. We'll start off here, see if he wants to trade. I don't expect he will.
very surprised if he took the trade. I'd love it if he did, because if he gets to 8 lands, that Invoker is pretty much going to end my game. And he is going to trade off. So I'm very happy to see that disappear. I still get to trampoline for him. Oh no, he has three toughens. Since Completely fucked that up. Oh, that was a misclick. Oh well. Uh, should be getting in for a lot more damage and uh, have messed that one up quite a bit. Gonna get the Serene Steward down. Okay, so next turn I need five for the Omdu Rising. The sixth gives me access to. Attacking with that 4 4, which is going to be important because this will probably be a 4 4. Okay, bridge down. Look, my opponent's got to come up with some pretty amazing stuff and land on Do Rising with mana up, get the counters on. The, the real key here is Serene Steward needs to give a counter, particularly to Ghostly Sentinel. Um, 
the main reason I really want to hit one on Ghostly Sentinel is it can no longer be Touch of the Void. I know he hasn't got much in the way of flyers, so if I can get my Ghostly Sentinel out of Touch of the Void range, that will mean my opponent has many, much fewer outs. But I want to minimize my opponent's outs, because the way I lose this game is him taking down my flyer and stabilizing the ground. Whereas after this turn, my opponent won't have an out to the Ghostly Sentinel, as far as I know. Now if we do the math here, Pilgrim's Eye blocks, Ghostly Sentinel, Blood Bond blocks, Great Horn takes 6. Alternately, you can block here and here takes 7. Go to 1. So if I attack with everything... Alright, it's just given up. There we go. What I was trying to figure out was whether or not attacking with Serene Steward was safe. Because if I attack with Serene Steward, I lose the opportunity to get the counter and get um, He could have blocked such that he takes 7 and kills Serene Steward. But it's probably not going to be that bad. Alright, well that's the first match done. We're going to drop down the stream again and uh, pick it back up at round 2.